Biotechnology has been a tool used to develop genetically modified crops that provide solution for several agricultural-related problems. Despite its long existence, some countries still prefer not to use or adopt biotechnology and its products. Usually when the technology is new, you find the, there is a resistance. But then because of additional activism activities, the opponent of biotechnology who has been in the country for over two decades, scaring people about the technology, which they have never even met or seen it anywhere. So we do have a, quite a very big number of activists in the country that are against the technology. Though we do not have it on the ground, but they are already, already raising their voice, their concerns that it, about technology will no longer will not benefit the smallholder farmers in Tanzania. Biotech critics actively voice out their concerns about biotechnology to the public. These cause fear and misinformation, neglecting facts about the technology that influence regulation and governance in many countries. Fear among the public lead to bans in strict regulatory system, hindering GM crop adoption. Well, I think one of the biggest things has been addressing so much misinformation about the technology and that's led to long, many years of uh, delays and approvals uh, in products in many countries around the world. When the media came and uh, uh, talked about GM that it caused cancer, that was the main problem because it affected the decision maker. And uh, although the, the farmers was very happy with these crops and they have a lot of benefit from it, but the, the crowd was afraid to use it because they have the, the assumption that it can cause cancer. So our country decided to take the option of strict liability and that limited the research for antibiotic generally. So most of the research were done in the laboratory, but researchers were kind of stagnant to go for confined field trials. The existing bans, policies, and strict regulations become a challenge for biotechnology. They slow down the advancement of the technology and hinder the potential benefits that non-adopting countries must be gaining. We are one of the countries in Africa that perpetually uh, suffers from uh, drought and so tools that can help in bringing drought tolerant uh, crops to Africa, for example, maize, we have the WEMA, the water efficient maize for Africa, has huge promises because then we'll get uh, food to feed millions who normally go hungry. And then we have the challenge of cassava mosaic and, uh, and cassava diseases that can only be addressed by using the genetic modification. So the biotechnology generally has a good potential to improve the livelihood of Tanzania. Banana is one of our major staples in Uganda and it is being affected by this banana bacterial wilt disease. Our researchers in Namlonge, one of the research institutes, have come up with a, a, a strain of bananas that can resist this banana bacterial wilt. This way, we shall be able to improve the food security in the country. In our country, uh, there are several issues that we uh, really going to use biotech as, as, as an option or as a solution. Mostly, uh, we, we have a problem of pest in cotton, cotton production. In that area, uh, BT cotton is one of the solutions that really a cotton that resists uh, uh, cotton bollworm. And in Indonesia, the first one is about drop tolerance. That's why we're developing drop tolerance sugarcane in the first case. So on the near release of the GM product in Indonesia is drop tolerance sugarcane. And the second one possibly is submerged tolerance crops. You know that in Indonesia is heavy rainfall and then frequently having a flooding. So the crop should be uh, tolerant to submerged condition. Apart from that, that we are going to develop kind possibly a beside tolerance because we're planting a number of large area of agriculture and then dealing with which is very very difficult so we try to uh, develop also a beside tolerance in this case while sustainable agricultural production is the obvious potential benefit from adapting gm crops there are other significant benefits that non-adopting countries are missing 
Biotechnology has got uh, a lot of uh, potential when it comes to environmental conservation. For example, when we use BT cotton or BT maize, we are reducing the use of uh, chemical pesticides and, that, and when you reduce the use of chemical, uh, chemicals and pesticides, we are definitely conserving biodiversity because we don't end up killing all the insects and other microorganisms that are associated with our crops. See, in order to have a very good production of cotton, farmers are, are obliged to spray at least 15 rounds of pesticides to control insects. If they get access uh, to the technology, which means uh, getting the BT seeds, it means that uh, they will reduce the amount of pesticide that they will need to spray uh, on their cotton to control the pests. And in this way, they protect the environment. It is undeniable that biotechnology can contribute in addressing issues such as food security, malnutrition, and environmental conservation. These benefits remain to be potential benefits for non-adopting countries. You know, we have so many needs. Uh, now estimates are saying by the year 2050, there's going to be 9.6 billion people on the planet, so approaching 10 billion, and that we need to produce twice as much food as we currently do in order to feed this new population. So we've got to look at all sorts of agricultural innovations and technologies, and this is one that has shown as much promise as anything. So it's critical that we keep it as an, an option for uh, various agricultural products that will lead to ensuring that we have enough food supply in the future and to keep it safe and nutritious. If we could get this technology, the different types of technologies, we could help to reduce on the hunger, we could help to reduce on the malnutrition that we know is happening in the country, blindness that is happening to children because of pro-vitamin A, and we are now having a product that is ready, but we can also use this technology for other things like biofuels to compensate or complement the non-renewable resources. We can use it for industry, even biopharmacy. We can use this for medical purposes as well. So we have a lot of hope and we hope that very soon we shall be able to benefit from the technology.